Something weird is happening in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. No, it's not radiotrophic fungus or increasingly Stygian amphibians. This time, the dogs, they're turning blue. At least, that's what social media claims. The reality, which we're about to go through, is both a lot less and a lot more interesting than you think. But first, this video is brought to you in collaboration with the Clean Futures Fund, a US-based nonprofit organization that monitors and maintains the small population of wild dogs living in Chernobyl's exclusion zone. Since Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, the CFF also now provides supplies to returning soldiers and personnel and offers veterinary services to people in surrounding cities. After I returned from Chernobyl in 2021, I became the social media ambassador for the Dogs of Chernobyl program. And I can happily say that thanks to your support of videos like this one, you and I have raised over $100,000 for this program, the most it's ever gotten from a single source. So thank you. If you've heard anything about these dogs in the last few years, it has come from Clean Futures Fund. I know that there's a lot going on in the world right now, and that you have a thousand other things you could care about. But I continue to support the Dogs of Chernobyl program because it's the only one in the world that studies the effects of constant, low-level ionizing radiation on human-sized mammals. That's something that I've recently staked my reputation on. Plus, they're all good boys, Brant. Look at him. Look at him. He, he look at him, he looks like a little airbender. Come on, how can you? No, you can't adopt one, sorry. As we go through this latest update, you're gonna see brand new photos and videos taken by the CFF on their recent trip to the dog's grossly contaminated habitat. We continue to do these missions even during wartime at no small cost to both funds and safety. So if you wanna continue supporting our work in Ukraine with this fascinating population of puppies, please consider clicking this button on this YouTube video to make a tax-deductible donation. As a reward, I will give you the latest up-to-the-minute updates on the dogs in Ukraine, and spoiler alert, it's good news. It came as a surprise to the Clean Futures Fund when these photos started going viral. I guess that anything odd in a place as infamous as Chernobyl is going to gain traction. Unfortunately, a lot of that traction was negative. Comments claiming that the CFF was painting these dogs or using AI to get social media attention. To be clear, we could not even catch these dogs, let alone spray paint them. One thing you learn in the zone is that although many of these animals can trace their lineage all the way back to pets left behind after disaster in 1986, they are now a wild population. Many are friendly, and most that live near the power plant rely on human intervention for food and medicine but they are not lap dogs. They recognize you, they run from you. So while we do catch and then spay, neuter, immunize, study, and otherwise interact with these dogs, these blue dogs in particular were never caught. So we can't say for sure why they're as blue as Cherenkov. Our current guess is that the dogs got into some cleaning chemical, maybe from a porta potty that was in the area. You know, dogs be doing dog things. They roll in poop and stuff like that. We can't say for sure. What we can say is that their coloration has nothing to do with radiation or mutation. This confusion was a problem when stories about Chernobyl's frogs came out. What appears to be happening in this case is that already naturally darker frogs are being selected for. It's not radiation dimming green frogs down. It's extremely unlikely for low-level ionization to create the radiation-induced mutations that would change the whole phenotype of an animal, what it looks like on the outside. That's not to say it's impossible. In fact, radiation-induced phenotypic changes to fruit flies were crucial data points in evolutionary science 100 years ago. All this is to say that blue disinfecting liquid covering wildly inquisitive wild dogs is a better explanation than specific radiation-induced mutations that turn fur azure. Social media has also claimed that Chernobyl's dogs are evolving to be resistant to both radiation and radiation-induced cancer. There is no evidence of this. In fact, to date, we don't have much evidence in general. Dr. Timothy A. Mousseau, the CFF scientific advisor, points out that, so far, the scientific literature has only conclusively demonstrated that there are two genetically distinct populations of semi-feral dogs in the zone. That's all the genetics that we have. While the relative isolation of these populations in Ukraine does encourage evolutionary change, we don't see any adaptive responses to low-level radiation so far. 
And I'll point out that expecting some extreme mutation is itself a misunderstanding of the radiation rates in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. This is a specific stretch of beach in Brazil, a popular tourist destination for decades. It's famous for its black sand, which is rich both in uranium and thorium. Dose rates on these beaches can get up to twice as high as what I personally measured inside the dome that houses the reactor for sarcophagus. And yet, we don't have mutant people flying back home from Brazil each summer. I'm being a little glib here, and it would not surprise me if this region of Brazil did in fact have lower rates of cancer, but it's an important comparison that puts the rates in Ukraine in proper context. They're just not that high. So, no, the puppies have not become immune or resistant to radiation or cancer. We don't have evidence of that, and it would be hard to get it, requiring many studies and thousands and thousands of observations across time. And even if low-level radiation was causing cancer in these animals, that's a disease that takes a long time to present itself. The sad truth of the situation in Ukraine is that most of these dogs don't live very long making observing something like cancer difficult to observe in the first place. Inbreeding, lack of food and shelter, predation by wolves and bears, these are the real stressors on the population, not cesium-137. That's why we go in with kibble, kennels, and vaccines. Hey, check it out! That's us! Look, I know it's just for the lulls that we talk about anime girls playing with the demon core or radioactive shrimps spicing up your next cocktail party, but we keep going through this misinformation aspect of Chernobyl because I know for a fact that it causes a lot of psychological damage for the people who live and work in Ukraine every single day thousands of people, and we know that that stigma can be more impactful than any amount of low-level ionizing radiation. Okay, as promised, a pup date. Everything we know about the dogs of Chernobyl right now. The Clean Futures Fund started going to the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone in 2017. When we first got there, there were over a thousand dogs and cats roaming it. As of October 5th, 2025, we have sterilized nearly every single dog in the zone and their population has shrunk from an unstable 1,000 to a medically managed around 300 or so. When the dogs are caught for treatment, we apply temporary marker to their cute little faces to indicate animals we've already performed surgery on. It washes off in two to three days. I am very happy to report that all of Chernobyl's dogs now appear much healthier, and they are living much longer. When I was in Ukraine, it was rare to see a dog older than three to five years. Now there are several dogs older than 10. There are 15 dogs right now on daily arthritis medication to treat ailments not from radiation, but simple inbreeding. If you'd like to support the Clean Futures Fund as we support a unique and fascinating population of puppies, please consider making a tax-deductible donation below. Thanks for watching. Look at him! Oh, look at his little face! Look at your little face! Until next time. <laughs> They're so cute!